a lecture on ML type inference. This is video number five. In this video, we learn type inference problem and notion of principal typing. So before the main topic of this lecture, I review the exercise I gave that is on typing derivations as inductive closure. I previously commented the following. Most of the data structures in computer science, including ex expressions, types, proofs, are regarded as inductive closure. Since typing derivation trees are a form of proofs, so these syntactic objects should therefore be understood as inductive closures. So let's review some notation. So this script D of this typing is a typing derivation tree with the conclusion of this typing. And then define this notation. This is a set of typing derivation trees for some E with gamma and tau. Gamma and tau. Now, with this notation, exercise is this one. This is somehow advanced, I said. That is, define the set of typing derivations, this type. This is the set of this member. This member is, as I said, set of typing derivation trees with gamma and tau. So this set, define this set as inductive closures. And uh, this is the ex exercise I gave, and I noted at the time that uh, for a satisfactory solution to this problem, this exercise, you need to extend the notion of inductive closures as a set of indexed sets. In, the, in, this, in this case, this pair indexed set. Right? So let's try to solve. <laughs> well, this, let's, let me show some example answer to this exercise. In order to construct a complete uh, solution of this exercise, there are several steps are necessary to construct. So this is the first step, so the definition of sorted set. So let sigma be a given set of sorts, and we use meta variable small sigma for a member of this sort. And then assume that the universal set U of sigma of sort sigma is given for each sigma. Then we define a sorted set. We use capital script letter for meta variables of the sorted sets. Now, a sorted set is a set of this shape. Each member is a subset of this universal set for sigma, for each sigma. And so this sorted set is a family of sets indexed by this sigma. Right? And then we write a dot sigma for the element of index sigma in this script A, right? And then sorted universal set is defined to be this set, right? For each sigma, we have uh, U of sigma as a member of this sigma indexed set of sets. And then we define usual set operation. We extend or generalize usual set operations to this sorted set. So let A and B be sorted, sorted sets, and delta be a non-empty set of sorted sets. Then sorted set inclusion, this one, the subset relation, is pointwise subset relation right? for each sigma. You have this relation. This is a definition of this uh, subset relation, which is quite natural. And then we extend union and intersection as a pointwise, right? So union of two sort of set is a collection of um, union for each sigma, same as intersection. And then big union and big intersection is also defined similarly, I mean, pointwise or elementwise or sortwise for, for each sigma. You have a collection of uh, this uh, sigma uh, 
sort sigma set and then take for each sigma take big union same as intersection so this is the first step of generalizing set not a notion of set to sorted set so second step is to define sorted inductive closure this is a this is a refinement or generalization of the notion of inductive closure to sorted set so for a function f of this type i mean this shape from this set to this set given such function f we call this kind of function a function on u this is a sorted universal set and write this way so this corresponds to the notation for f of rank n. And then for a given sorted set A and the set f of functions on u in this in this sense, right? We write f of a for the following set. So f of a is this set for each sigma. We have uh, b of sigma and b of sigma is defined this way for each member of this f corresponding tuple we make corresponding tuple corresponding this this sort or this this i didn't define this as a sort but this is uh, this is kind of a function sort right so this is a type you can understand as a type so according to this index we create a tuple and then this function is applied to that tuple and correct all these elements and this is natural extension to the previous definition of f of, f of uh, x in that case, in that, in that previous definition of inductive closure. This is a straightforward or natural generalization of a sorted set. And then, a sorted set A is said to be closed under f if this inclusion, I mean, this is the inclusion extended to sorted set. This inclusion relation, this subset relation is satisfied. And then for a sorted set C and a set F of functions on U, the sorted inductive closure written this way in the C cam F of C and F is the smallest sorted set that contains C and closed under F here smallest is taken to be the smallest with respect to subset relation on sorted set right right so contains is also a subset relation of a sorted set so this is a definition i mean straightforward right? quite a natural refinement to inductive closure to sorted set so next step is to prove some property on this on this sorted inductive closure just just as we did for the usual notion of inductive closure that is two proposition two property first proposition is that to this definition that is the smallest sorted set including c and closed under f is indeed equal to this big intersection of the set of sorted set, right? And then also we define a family of sorted sets by the following inductive equation. Start with given this sorted set C, and then this is the inductive recursive equation, inductive equation that x n, of n plus one is x n union in the sense of sorted set union, f applied to f of n, right? So this is exactly the same as before on this uh, on this sorted set generalization. And then this proposition is also true that this inductive closure, sorted inductive closure, is equal to the union of this sorted set indexed by natural number. Right? So these proposition are proved similarly to the standard definition of inductive closure so this is a good exercise you can try nothing difficult i would say so this is the final step of constructing a, a solution to the exercise that is a 
definition of uh, typing derivations as sorted inductive closure. We have completed the definition of sorted inductive closure. And then we create a universal sorted in inductive sorry, universal sorted set and then define operation and also define a starting set of sort starting set sorted set and define this typing derivations set of all typing possible typing derivation as sorted inductive closure. So the detail is the following. So this is quite mechanical, nothing complicated, but let's go through. So we define a pre-derivation tree to be a tree whose node is a pair of typing and a label. We have four typing rules corresponding to those four typing rules. Right? So this is a pre-derivation pre tree, set of all possible tree like structure, and there are no consistency relation up uh, uh, enforced. So this is just a tree-like syntactic structure. And then let define sigma, that, that is a set of sort, to be the set of all pairs of gamma and tau. Right? And then for each pair, gamma tau, we define the set of all pre-derivation trees whose root is of the form, this form, for some expression and label L. Rubber is one of these uh, name of the typing rules, and then define the U to be the set of this set for each sigma that is a pair of gamma and tau, U of gamma and tau, right? Now, under this preparation, we define the first of all C, a given constant, and then operation to generate a new element in the following way. First, this is this C is a sorted set. So this is a collection of a sigma indexed set. So for each sigma that is gamma and tau, we define this set union, this set. That is this is a this is a single node derivation tree by var typing rule and this is a single node derivation tree by const rule and so c of gamma colon gamma tau is the set of all single node complete typing derivation tree of gamma and tau right so this is a starting point this act as a constant in the conventional notion of inductive closure and so correcting all these we get script c and the function f is a two kind. One is app, which corresponds to the typing rule for app, which takes two derivation tree and extend these two with one node that is a typing of the conclusion. So this is just a, I didn't detail the uh, effect of this application of this function, but it's obvious this uh, function corresponds to applying typing rule app. This is similar to this. This is for each x. This operation lambda x of this shape corresponds to the typing rule for ab abs, right? So takes uh, typing derivation of this shape, including uh, x column tau 1 and then extend with one node of this typing right so this is a this correspond to a typing rule so uh, with this operation we generate all possible derivable typing starting with this axiom right so then we have this this typing set of all typing this set that is this set to be this sorted inductive closure. So this, this is tedious, but uh, this is nothing complicated. And this is, I believe you understand that, that this is a mechanical and smooth and natural extension or generalization of inductive closure. The big benefit of looking at understanding this fact is that now you can freely use induction 
on typing derivation, right? So, so this is a one example solution to the exercise. And so far the exercise, now let's review the contents we have learned in the previous lecture, that is implicitly typed lambda calculus. Right? We defined typing derivation system, small lambda. This is a logical inference system consisting of the four rules bar const abs, app to construct typing derivation trees. We just formalize this as a sorted inductive closure. So this is a syntactic object, a tree-like object. So this is a logical system called the type system. And then the main object of this type system is this one, typing derivation. We use this notation. So this is a tree-like structure consi consisting of external node, which are instances of bar or const axiom, and then internal nodes, which are instances of abs and app rules. And this tree, the root node, is the typing of this form for this, for some e. Right? Then we define derivable typing written this way, lambda turn style this typing to be a typing that has a typing derivation tree. Right? So this is a review of uh, the system so far defined. So let me make one more comment on the previous lecture's contents. That is comment on uh, the, this abstraction rule, ab, abs rule. So in the previous video, I commented the following. This rule, right? So this is now familiar rule to derive typing for this abstraction or rule for making a function, right? So this is a quite natural rule to form a function. So I, so I commented the following. This rule states that if E has type tau2 and an environment of this containing this assumption on X, then lambda X dot E has type, type tau1 arrow tau2 under the environment obtained by eliminating this assumption x, assumption x. Now, I said, but this explanation is not completely precise. And so, so to understand this meaning, um, the recommended exercise is this one. So this, this is the exercise recommended for everybody. Right. So that is check that following tree, this tree, this derivation tree is a derivable tree according to the definition. You try to work out step-by-step -step application of um, typing derivation by actually consulting the definition of each rule, right? Then you would understand this, not precise, that that is that is, you have this same, right? So something, something odd looking, but this is quite legitimate, nothing wrong. So you actually don't eliminate in some case, in this case, for example. So this is the exercise I recommend to try. Type inference problems in small lambda system. This is the first main topic of this today, this today's video lecture. So there are three variants of three forms of type inference problems. First one is this one. For a given typing, this is just a syntactic uh, triple gamma e tau, just a randomly corrected uh, triple. Then, given this triple, this, this form of uh, object, decide whether or not it is derivable. That is, this relation fold. And uh, this is the first form. The second form is for a given expression E, decide whether or not there is a pair gamma and tau such that this statement, this derivation fold, so that this gamma under gamma E has type tau, this statement is derivable. So this is the second form of type inference problem. The third form, for a given E, determine 
the set, this set, that is typing, which is derivable. So this form is a problem to determine the set of all typing that is derivable. So this set is written in the following video. I write this way, typing parenthesis E. And as I know that, this type notation of typing is used before to denote set of all typing derivation. That In that case, I used typing parenthesis gamma colon tau and this set is different than the previous one, and this is the one we are using in the rest of this lecture, typing of E. This is a set of all derivable typing. Right? So these three forms of type, type inference problems, right? And then you can notice that among these threes, this one, this third one, is the most general one in the sense that the, these other two can be solved by using this, this solution of this third form. Let's check this. That, uh, so if we can determine this set typing of E, then the first form of problem, that is checking whether this is uh, derivable or not, is solved by checking this uh, set membership. So this whether this is a, an element of this this set, this uh, under the con under the assumption that this set is constructed. The second problem, that is, uh, given E, decide whether uh, there is some typing derivation for E, can also be solved by checking that given I mean solved set constructed this set is empty or not. Right. Now we understand the type inference problem is, then a type inference algorithm is an algorithm to solve a type inference problem. So there is, this is a strategy to construct such, um, such a type inference algorithm. So we know that the type inference problems can be solved by constructing this set, set of typing of E, that is set of all possible typings that is derivable. Right? So this set. So this is the most general form. So if we can do this, then any form of type inference problems can be solved. And this is a strategy we should take. That is, the most general form is the one which can be systematically uh, solved by typically by induction. This is a usual winning strategy. In this case, it is it is the case. So under this observation, we go on to observe that for this to be possible, I mean, for this types to be, for this set, this set to be determined, we need a concrete and finite representation of this set, right? So as a warning, there are some type system, the, 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 this set, set of all possible typing derivation, it's difficult to determine, or there is no finite representation of this set. So it is actually, usually, this is a case. If you define type system, then, I mean, some complicated, some, some powerful type system, then usually this set is not representable, or it's not it is difficult to determine the membership. But for, fortunately, in the case of simply typed lambda calculus, this lambda, we can define a notion called principal typing of E that precisely represents this set typing of E. Right? So this is, of course, this is something we need to show. Right, but for the moment, this such kind of uh, special notion of uh, typing exists. Then, based on this property to be shown, we construct a type inference algorithm in the following steps. First, define the principal typing of E. 
but this is using type variable substitution. And then, second, construct an algorithm to compute a principal typing of E using type unification. And third, prove the correctness of the algorithm. So this is the strategy. So if this statement is true, then so this strategy should be uh, completed. Right? So we need to do this way to show that principal typing of E, this notion indeed, is established. So this is our strategy that we follow. The first technical building block is type substitution. A type substitution denoted by S for substitution is a function from a finite set of type variables to types. So we write this notation for the type substitution that maps ti to tau i for each i. And then we define extensions, two form of extensions given s, s plus and s hat of s. s plus is extension to t bar, this type, and s hat is extension to type, set of all types, are defined by the following equation. First one, s plus of t is s of t if t is domain of s. Otherwise, just return t unchanged. So this is extension to the set of all type variables. And then s hat. s hat on type variable is s plus of t. And then extend to types according to the structure of types. So for base type, it is just a base type. There is no type variables. And then for function type, you apply first a component, tau1 and tau2, and then combined by this arrow. So this is a homomorphic extension of this S plus to structure of types. Right? So the composition, next definition of the composition of S1 and S2, denoted by just S1, S2. This is a type substitution that satisfy this equation. This composition applied to type variable is this function. First, you apply S2 plus to type variable, and then to the result, you apply this S hat, hat of S1. So composition, so we use the notation that composition operation associates to the right and right, for example. So if you write this way, then this is taken to be that you make the composition, this composition first, and then make a composition S1 and the result of this composition. So this is a usual notation we have used in the literature, in the type inference of our type, type systems. Um, I have a warning or some comment on this um, composition. So I said uh, composition is a type substitution that satisfies this equation. Indeed, there are many um, type substitution that satisfy this equation, right? So, so usually in the definition of type, a composition of two type substitution, which are defined to be a finite maps, we usually don't write down the actual finite map, the graph, and usually this is that. And if you are worried about, it, you can think a possible detailed definition of this composition, and then you can find that this is okay and have just some way to define this finite uh, concrete definition. But usually we don't worry about this. So this is usually enough. And um, so, yes, so this is the composition, definition of composition. And then the function s hat further extends to any syntactic structure containing types or containing type variables to be exact. The same thing. 
And in what follows, we identify S with its extension S hat and simply write S for S hat. Right? So this is a technical ingredient of type substitution. Now comes the important notion of principal typing. The warning is that this is not a principal type of an expression usually said in the literature. Such kind of thing is difficult to define, uh, I, as I noted, as I commented in the previous or beginning of this lecture. So, in contrast, principal typing is straightforward notion. Nothing complicated, nothing difficult, just, just a plain set of theoretical notions. So let's go through this important uh, concept. So, so, so in order to do, in order to define principal typing, first we define the relation on typing. So, given two typing, this one and this one, if these two satisfy the condition, the following condition, there is some substitution S such that S applied to gamma is a subset of gamma prime and S applied to tau is equal to tau prime, then this, I mean the result of application S and add some component to this gamma type environment, this result of applying S for short, the result is an instance of this typing. And also the same relation is represented in this way. This typing, gamma under gamma, E has type tau, is more general than this gamma prime under gamma prime, E cron, E has type tau prime. So this is a relation, binary relation typing. And then principal typing of E is a typing that satisfy this equation. So, so this typing is a principal typing if set of all instance of this principal typing, set of all instance, right? This, this is just a syntactic object, syntactic set obtained by taking an instance of this given typing, right? Is equal to the set of derivable typing of E, right? So principal typing is something that uh, the set of all typing is the instance of that typing. So principal typing represent, in this sense, represent all the derivable typing of E. So this is a simple straightforward notion, and nothing complicated, but also has important uh, message that uh, principal typing represents set of all possible derivable typing of a given expression E. Right. right. So, in another way of saying is that principal typing of E is a most general typing of the set of all derivable typings of E. You can say it's the most general typing, but there are many typings which are equivalent, right? So, I say there is a most general typing. You don't worry about this, just that uh, because this relation is not anti-symmetric, right? So this is pretty order, but you don't have to worry about this. And just, just follow this definition. And then principal typing. Therefore, principal typing, there are many principal typings, but they are all equivalent in the sense of this relation, this relation, right? So this is the notion of principal typing, which is most important. And we base on this relation, a bit no, notion to develop a type inference algorithm in the next lecture. I end this lecture by giving examples of principal typings. The first one is principal typing for x. And this is a principal typing of x. It's trivial but important in de defining or developing principal typing algorithm. I mean principal type, type inference algorithm that construct principal typing which we study later. So, so this is obviously uh, most general
typing for x, right? Any typing of x, you have assumption x comma some tau and the conclusion of the same type, type tau. And that kind of typing can be obtained by substituting this type variable t for some type tau and add some extra assumption other than x. So this is a principal typing. And this property can be checked by looking at this bar axiom. And any instance of this bar axiom is indeed an instance of this type principal typing. So this is the first example. Next example is x x apply y. And this typing, x colon t1 arrow t2 and y colon t1 under this type environment, x apply y has type t2. And indeed, this is a principal typing. And you can see that uh, x must be a function taking y. Therefore, the most general one is to assume the argument type t1 and y is the same type of t1 and the result may be any type t2 and that is a result of this uh, type right and you can check that this is indeed a principal typing by checking the shape of typing derivation for this expression x and x apply y so this is a type shape of typing derivation tree right so end with this app rule and leaf of bar to bar axiom right so so next example is this lambda x dot x and this is the identity function this is the identity function so obviously intuitively this has type t or t for any t and um, indeed this is a principal typing of this expression again you can check that uh, the fact this fact the, the fact that this is a principal typing by looking at a possible derivation typing derivation of this term which has this shape right end with abs and start with bar axiom right so any type of uh, this expression has the form of tau or tau of under any type environment gamma right and then this can be obtained by substituting t for tau and add whatever assumption to this empty set so these are example of principal typings and uh, and this is the end of this lecture video.